Income Tax 2023-2024. Electing the Section 179 deduction. When must you recapture the deduction? Get ready and some coffee so we can avoid the government forcing us to move into a shack with income tax preparation 2023-2024. Most of this information, first a word from our sponsor. Yeah, actually we're sponsoring ourselves on this one because apparently the merchandisers, they don't want to be seen with us. But, but that's okay, whatever. Because our merchandise is, is better than their stupid stuff anyways. Like our crunching numbers is my cardio product line. Now, I'm not saying that subscribing to this channel, crunching numbers with us, will make you thin, fit, and healthy or anything. However, it does seem like it worked for her. Just saying. So, you know, subscribe, hit the bell thing, and buy some merchandise. So you can make the world a better place by sharing your accounting instruction exercise routine. If you would like a commercial free experience, consider subscribing to our website at accountinginstruction.com or accountinginstruction.thinkific.com. It can be found in publication 946, How to Depreciate Property, Section 179, Deduction, Special Depreciation Allowance, Makers Listed Property, and more, Tax Year 2023, which you can find on the IRS website at irs.gov, irs.gov. Remember, in the first half of the income tax formula, basically a funny income statement. Most income statements having income minus expenses resulting in net income. Here, having income minus various deductions resulting in taxable income. The sole proprietorship Schedule C rolling into line one income of the formula. Noting the Schedule C itself basically an income statement having business income minus business expenses which you can also call business deductions resulting in in essence net business income which is what rolls in from the schedule c to line one income of the formula the formula outlining the calculation on the form 1040 this being the first page of the form 1040 schedule c ultimately rolling into line eight additional income from schedule one this is a schedule one additional income and adjustments to income part number one additional income schedule c rolling into line three business income or loss this is the profit or loss and loss <laughs> profit or loss from business schedule c having an income statement format income minus expenses the expenses typically having the most category of items within it, some of those expense items being more complex than others, such as the depreciation, where as we saw in prior presentations, even if on a cash-based system, the IRS will typically force us to do an accrual thing, putting property, plant, and equipment, depreciable assets on the books as an asset, which could be complicated because we have a Schedule C. Where is the balance sheet? It's not here. But we could have a separate schedule, depreciation schedule, representing the balance sheet account of the assets that we can then depreciate, having accumulated depreciation calculated there and the depreciation expense calculated per year, helping us to determine the expense to be allocated in uh, the current period. So remember the general idea with this would be that the tax code is trying to follow generally accepted accounting principles because the difference in timing of when we use the expense to generate revenue and when we pay for it, which makes sense. And that means that their normal, the normal method for accounting might first to be thought of as a straight line method, meaning if I had a $10,000 piece of equipment, I might depreciate it for 10 years, let's say $1,000 each year evenly over the time frame we're going to use it. But it could be argued that I think we're going to have more depreciation up front because I'm going to get more use out of it up front. And therefore, I should depreciate more in the early years rather than the latter years. That's called an accelerated depreciation method, the most common method, double declining balance method, which still is a very common accounting method for generally accepted accounting principles and is mirrored by the tax code with the maker's depreciation, which we'll talk about in future presentations, which is basically for most depreciable assets, a double declining balance with a half year convention. And then the tax code adds on to that 
other things that are, aren't generally accepted accounting principles, such as accelerated depreciations in the form of like a 179 deduction, which is what we're focused on now, or special depreciation, bonus depreciations, and so on, which are there because of like lobbying or trying to stimulate the economy or so on and so forth. Heat the economy or uh, lessen the heating of the economy, for example. So right now we've been talking about the 179 deduction, which is a situation where uh, you, you could end up in a situation where basically we would like as a taxpayer to have expensed property, plants, and equipment in year one. The IRS says, no, you have to put it on the books as an asset and depreciate it according to the rules. So we do that. Then we could end up in a situation where the 179 deduction allows us to, in essence, expense in the form of depreciation, the full amount of the cost of the equipment, which leads to the question of why didn't you just let me expense it in the first place? Why did I have to go through the depreciation at all? Which of course is because the tax code gets all messy and complex because they're going back and forth between generally accepted accounting principles and lobbying kind of weird stuff going on to stimulate the economy and so on and so forth. So we talked in the past about electing the 179 deduction, dollar limitations, and so on. Now we want to talk about the recapture. Uh, when must you recapture the deduction? So th we've, there's a couple of situations that we want to basically keep in mind when we have these accelerated depreciations. Uh, one is that you could have certain types of property that is both business and personal, and there's a mixture of business and personal. Is that going to stop you if it's partly personal from taking the depreciation? Uh, that's number one. And another issue comes up with regards to these accelerated depreciation situation uh, where if I'm going to get a 179 deduction and an accelerated depreciation method and possibly special depreciation, whatever I'm going to take to take more depreciation up front, that means that if I had a $10,000 piece of equipment, and I got to depreciate the entire thing up front, it now has a book value of zero, right? Because now I've, I've already used up all the book value and expensed it kind of like I was on a cash-based system. But the, but the forklift, let's say it's a forklift, is still on the books, right? And I got that expense in the form of depreciation against the, the ordinary income progressive tax rates. So in other words, I got a benefit at ordinary income tax rates uh, at that time. So then in the future, what if I sell that property? If I sell that property, I'm almost certainly going to have a gain if I sell it for anything because I depreciated the whole thing up front. The cost or basis or adjusted basis is now at zero. And there becomes a question of, well, if I have a gain, then I might be able to, do I get to have favorable tax rates on the gain? When I, had, when I got a deduction, the only reason I have a gain is because I got an accelerated deduction. So, so meaning I, I over depreciated early, which means when I sold it, I had the gain. When I got the deduction, I got the most favorable ordinary income rates, which was a benefit. When I sell it, if I was to get the capital gains rates, you would think that that would be unfair, right? It doesn't seem to match. You would think I would have to recognize the ordinary income uh, tax rates on the gain up to the point that I over depreciated. So those are just some things that come up and these are kind of the problems that come up when we have to deal with these accrual concepts. And then the IRS is basically deviating from the accrual concepts to do other things that happen. And then the complications with having a progressive tax system with multiple rates. And on top of that, multiple different progressive rates one for ordinary income and one for capital gains and the problem that could happen if we have property that has a component that is both business and personal okay so given that premise when must you recapture the deduction so you must uh, you may have to recapture the section 179 deduction if in any year during the property's recovery period the percent of business use drops to 50 percent or less so in other words this possibly is most common with a car, although we saw that the cars also has other limitations possibly with relation to the automobiles and the amount of 179 deduction. But the idea would be if you put it on the books, it might be partially business and partially personal. We would 
with an automobile have to elect whether we're taking the direct write-off method or a uh, pers or a mileage method. If we take the direct write-off method, that's when we would be calculating the depreciation as part of the calculation uh, and possibly be able to take some of the 179 deduction. But it has to be over 50% generally in order to allow that. What happens if it was over 50% and then it drops below 50%? So this year you took the deduction, it was over 50% use of the car for business and then your business went under or you're not using it as much for business and next year uh, it's, it's mostly personal. So in the year the business use drops to 50% or less, you include the recapture amount as ordinary income in part uh, four of form 4797. So this probably doesn't happen like all the time, but if it does happen, it can be somewhat complex. And again, accounting software can be quite helpful. Accounting software will be helpful with depreciation in general, calculating the depreciation, helping to calculate the 179 deduction, helping to run scenarios as to which property to allocate the 179 deduction to, and carrying forward that information. So if there are changes in the following year, it can help you with the calculations of the recaptures, uh, for example. So obviously we need to know the general rules so that we can then see what's happening in the software and try to verify the software, deconstruct what the software is doing to see if it's correct. And also, of course, so that we can explain what is happening to a client in, in an event where we have a recapture situation, which might need some explanation. <laughs> so you also increase the basis of the property by the recapture amount. So in other words, what happened in this situation, the 179 deduction allowed you to take more of the expense up front, which means you got to eat into more of the basis up front and take the deduction earlier rather than later. If you're going to recapture the deduction, now they're saying, okay, you can't take the the deduction uh, up front. We're going to recapture it. What, what should that happen to the, to the cost of the property? The basis of the property should go back up because now we've basically negated the fact that you got a benefit from reducing the basis of the property. So there's this always this interplay with these depreciable property in terms of what is the basis. We would like to have the basis, the adjusted basis higher because a higher adjusted basis allows us to get a deduction at some point. We would like to consume that deduction as soon as possible, expensing it up front if we could, meaning take the deduction or the basis all the way down to zero as we might do if we got a 179 deduction for the whole property because then we get the whole benefit up front but if we don't get the benefit up front then we're going to take the basis and we're going to get it in the form of depreciation over the life of the property or when we ultimately sell the property then there's going to be a gain or loss at the point in time that we sell the property at which point again we would like the basis to be as high as possible because if we sell something and the basis is high our gain is going to be lower which is good for taxes or our loss if there's a loss on the sale will be higher okay so recovery periods for property are discussed under which recovery period applies in chapter four all right caution if you sell exchange or otherwise dispose of the property do not figure the recapture amount under the rules explained in this discussion instead use the rules for for uh, recapturing depreciation explained in chapter three of publication 544 under section 1245 property so for qualified real property see notice 2013-59 for determining the portion of the gain that is attributable to section 1245 property upon the sale or other disposition of qualified real property. You can find notice 2013-59 at the IRS website. So caution two, if the property is listed property, which we discussed the major example often being an automobile having those limitations on, uh, on the deduction limits for things like the 179 and normal makers accelerated depreciation which we'll talk about later uh, do not figure the recapture amount under the rules explained in this discussion when this percentage of business drops to 50 percent or less instead use the rules for recapturing uh, excess depreciation in chapter 5 under what is the business use requirement all right figuring the recapture amount so i in any case 
Uh, to figure the amount to recapture, take the following steps. Figure the depreciation that would have been allowable on the Section 179 deduction you claimed. Begin with the year you placed the property in service and include the year of recapture. Subtract the depreciation figure in one from the Section 179 deduction you claimed. The result is the amount you must recapture. So we're going to do the two calculations under the different scenarios and then figure the amount that needs to be recaptured. Again, software obviously useful for these calculations. Example, in January 2021, Paul Lamb, a calendar year taxpayer, bought and placed in service Section 179 property costing $10,000. The property is not listed property, so it's not like the automobile and whatnot. The property is three-year property, meaning it's going to be depreciated over three years, so the recovery of the $10,000 uh, would be over three, you know, recovered over three years. So Paul elected a $5,000 Section 179 deduction for the property and also elected not to claim a special depreciation. So we have this overlap between the 179 and special depreciation, both kind of unusual rules from an accounting standpoint because they're not in accordance with generally accounting standards or, you know, or an equivalent to them, whereas the maker's depreciation kind of is, okay? So that's, there's some weird interplay then between the 179 and uh, the special depreciation because they both allow this kind of accelerated stuff up front. So Paul used the property only for business in 2021 and 2022. In 2023, Paul used the property 40% for business and 60% personal. So we dropped below the 50% threshold. Paul figures the recapture amount as follows. So section 179 deduction claimed in 2019 was 5,000 minus allowable depreciation table A1 instead of section 179 deduction. So we have the 2021, 2022, 2023, the 750 times the 40% is gonna give us our total. Here's our subtotal inside. So the recapture amount is going to be uh, the difference of the $814.80. Caution. So if any qualified zone property placed in service during a particular year ceases to be used in an empowerment zone by an enterprise zone business in a later year, the benefit of the increased Section 179 deduction must be reported as other income on your return. So that's somewhat of an unusual situation, but another complication coming into place with these empowerment uh, zones. So if if there's an empowerment zone situation in there, then that could add another wrinkle into the system, which again, hopefully tax software can kind of help you to uh, figure the calculations and then basically deconstruct what is happening with regards to these uh, regulations so that you can make sure that you're doing that properly and also being able to explain to say a client what is happening and why.